on the federal Republic of Nigeria, who is also the chairman of the National Assembly, the Civil Service Club, and not our. Industry of aviation, which is a catalyst for national growth and development and prosperity of Nigeria, to which the future and fortune of Nigeria rests upon. In appreciation of what you are doing, the members of Ireland Association of Nigeria (AON) and some aviators uh, were in my office to sort of sit that I accompany them when they are coming to pay you a courtesy visit and to thank you. And they have one or two items on their table that they want to share with Mr. President and by extension the entire legislature and to crave your indulgence. So with these few remarks, and by your leave Mr. President, I would like to cede the microphone to a nominated person that will speak on their behalf and I assure you they will be as brief as possible and as straight to the point. We thank you for your animal support, understanding and respect for this all important industry of ours. Thank you very much. I'm the chairman of APIS and the vice president of AON. With me here is the president of AON. Dr. Abdullah Fimusa, the chairman of Asman Air, and all the members, the board members of AWE, with our former chairman uh, directly following me, and Shehu Wada of uh, Max Air, of course, Kashim Shetima, the Skyjet chairman, and Haji Munir Bankole, the chairman of Mayview. Mr. President, we want to thank you and members of the legislature, especially the Senate, and of course, the Committee on Aviation for you know, identifying with the plight of aviation in the country. Like the Honorable Minister has said, aviation is no longer an elitist business. It's not for the elite. And that is the mistake we've made over time, thinking that aviation is elitist. It's not. It's a catalyst that propels the growth of the economy entirely and even the GDP. You notice that during the lockdown, uh, the world was crying for aviation. But before the advent of COVID, airlines in Nigeria have been going through turbulent times. Mr. President, sir, it's not something to be proud of that in the last 30 years of our life as a nation, over 50 airlines have gone down. The owners of these airlines succeeded in other businesses. Why have they failed in aviation? It could be traced down to so many factors, including, yes, corporate governance, but most importantly, policies. The policies have never been friendly to the growth of aviation because over in this climb, we've never understood that Aviation is not an elitist business. And as long as we start continue treating it as an elitist thing, then of course, so long shall we continue to have the complaints and the downfall of airlines one after the other. Aviation business is not a lucrative business. Even in the first so-called first world, all the legacy airlines of this world, sir, the profit margin even when they have everything going for them, with loan being granted to them at 2%, still made marginal profit of about 1% to 2%. So you can imagine in Nigeria where the airlines are being made to pay 26 27% for their loans, where they are being made to pay some other charges that make them taxes, VAT, and all sorts of things, they bring us down. We decided to cry to you. We are very appreciative of uh, your leadership of the National Assembly, the peace you brought to bear on the National Assembly. That is why, over the years, 
if we are not incoming, but this time we know we have a listening leader that could make things happen. That is why we are here today. The truth is, sir, the president of this country, President Muhammad Buhari, in his wisdom and in his avowed determination to encourage indigenous business in this country, decided to grant zero duty to airlines for the importation of commercial <coughs> aircraft, for the importation of commercial aircraft spares. He equally granted airlines waiver on VAT for importation of aircraft and aircraft spares. In the last six years, this has helped a lot of the airlines in Nigeria, and we thank Mr. President for this. However, just recently this year, the customs decided to um, reintroduce, even when Mr. President has not revoked his presidential order taken at the Federal Executive Council. They have introduced a kind of clearing that is alien to aviation. Mr. President, sir, I would like to intimate to you that this particular regime of reintroducing what Mr. President has granted us has made airlines today to be groaning under this weight. Many of the airlines have their spare parts in the, in the, sea, uh, at the seaport, at the uh, uh, cargo sheds, not being cleared. Because we don't have the money to clear them. And we can never decide to endanger the lives of people in this country by flying aircraft that are unsafe. So, Mr. President, we are pleading with you to look into this. The finance bill is today before you. We would like the intention and the wisdom of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, to be incorporated in that finance bill so that it will never be at the whims and caprices of whoever takes over some certain government agencies going forward. All over the world, this is what is happening. Nigeria cannot be an exception. Uh, we have been going round and round this. To be honest with you, all the airlines wanted to shut down last week indefinitely, but for the intervention of the Honorable Minister of Aviation, uh, Senator, the Swiss Senator Hadi Sirika, airlines would have shut down last week because we cannot continue in this. We are borrowing money at 27, 26%. Now the, uh, the interest rate has come down. It has become about 15%, which is still very high. We are changing money. We can't even get Forex to do our business. We are getting Forex at 510, sometimes 506. We are, everything about aviation, Mr. President, is important. Not even the carpet you step on when you go into the aircraft. You're not allowed to buy it, not even from any shop in America, not to talk of Nigeria, because those are special things. Everything in the aircraft, none is manufactured in Nigeria. We have our receipts in Naira, through the ticket fares we get, and of course, we, our expenditures are in dollars. How do we continue to function under this kind of uh, weight? So we, have, we plead with you that this issue of VAT, Forex, custom, uh, 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 the, the, the effect is so much on us. We ask that, Mr. President, we get these things incorporated in the finance bill. We are not asking for something that is too much. Mr. President, in his wisdom, has granted this to us. We want a continuation of it, but we want it to be backed up by legislation. That is the only way we can begin to save the industry. And Nigerians on board will never forget the present Senate for helping aviation. Aviation provides jobs. Those in the business of aviation are not in it because of money. It takes your passion. And everything you get, you put it in there. It's not for money making, it's just a service. Like I said, Generations of born will not forget this day that you who decided to legislate on this and make it part of our legislation. The issue of VAT removal from VAT and custom duties removal 
as Mr. President granted us, from commercial airport, I mean commercial aircraft importation and commercial aircraft spare parts. And of course, removal of VAT from transportation. That is ticket fares. Removal of VAT from ticket fares. Now VAT is 7.5%. All over the world, this is what is done. And even in Nigeria, in Nigeria, every uh, uh, transportation is exempted from VAT, except air transport, because it's being looked at as being elitist. Even the private airlines, the private jets that do private uh, charters, when you carry a dangote to Abuja, as me he charters a plane, he's not elitist. That dangote is overseeing the livelihood of over 40,000 Nigerians. So you're not moving dangote. Oh, he, he, he goes on a private jet. No, he's carrying on his shoulders the livelihood of over 40 Nigerians under his employ. So all over the world, Aviation is being supported by governments only. You see what happened in America? Over 50 billion dollars disbursed to the to to uh, to, uh, 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 to the airlines. All over the world, airlines are being helped because they know the margins are very very small. The only way to help us sir, is to legislate on these things and make it part of our legislation, so that airlines will continue to serve Nigerians and serve them safely too. Thank you, Mr. President. We thank you for all you've been doing for us. And at the same time, the last one is insurance. Sir, the insurance law is... Senator Hadi Suluka, our colleague and brother and friend, and the leadership of the Airline Association of Nigeria, the operators, of our airline uh, to this very important meeting. This courtesy call is very important, and when the request was made, uh, we didn't waste time to grant the request because we believe that we have, uh, it is imperative we hold this kind of meeting so that we're able to understand what the aviation industry in Nigeria is going through and how the National Assembly can be of help. I'm pleased to hear that the, our administration has been quite supportive to the industry. And I believe that the essence of government by supporting this industry is for the aviation industry to continue to support the development of the economy. I didn't have an opportunity to formally congratulate the Minister of Aviation for his uh, appointment as Honorable Minister of Aviation. And I want to take this opportunity to do so. The, the president made a very wise decision by appointing a minister of aviation who himself is an aviation person. He understands the industry and therefore could unravel some intricacies easily. Even though that is not a requirement for any person to be appointed the Minister of Aviation, but I think this one brings a lot of experience and value addition. The policies of government of all times should be intended to make things better to make life better for citizens particularly and support businesses to grow. The aviation industry, of course, is no exception. Government policies should always be targeted at ensuring that this industry prospers. 
I I don't know whether it is a coincidence really. There is a public hearing going on on the financial bill twenty finance bill twenty twenty right now. I want to advise if you haven't done so already that you have your representation there because the public hearing provides an opportunity for individuals as well as businesses or corporate organizations to make their views known so that uh, eventually such views uh, would be incorporated and carried along when the report will be laid before any chamber of the National Assembly. So if you have not sent any representation, I think you should do so. And if you have, I want to assure you that the Senate Okay. Apparently, the minister is uh, working on both sides. He writes, I give you, he writes, I give us. Maybe so. <laughs> no, that's the advantage of being on both sides. So, we, we should have um, your representation. I. The Honourable Minister has just given me some more information that the FRS law or bill, now is part of the bill, and I took very specific interest in the FRS uh, bill that has come with uh, the finance bill uh, when they were drafting it because I, I learned that the auto industry would have a reduced tariff and effect. No, <laughs> that, that's not the way to encourage local uh, investors here. You, you can't be reducing the tariff, and then everybody will just bring in his uh, ways to, to, to us and become a dumping ground. We should also encourage uh, local production. So I followed the, the drafting of the FRS uh bill particularly that the aviation <coughs> sector was missed we will find out why it was not included but i want to assure you that what this senate will do and indeed the national assembly is to ensure that you are protected you are supported any exemption that will help this industry not only survive but prosper, the National Assembly will stand by that. Uh, they don't understand the Senate protocol. We don't clap in the Senate. <laughs> but we appreciate uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe next time we should have a tutorial before we come here. <laughs> Just there. So we, we will ensure that we look at we look at that. One thing is very, very important. We are in a very difficult situation in Nigeria. We need the revenues, but we also need our government to ensure that when in the process of getting more revenues, we don't kill where the revenues will come from. So we, we need to have uh, to strike a very decent balance of encouraging industries to create jobs and employment on one hand, and of also getting revenues. So I believe that we should do whatever it takes to ensure that you you survive and you also prosper. I I had a lot of complaints about two days ago. Somebody told me, called, he said, he, he came to the airport 
and the air fare has just doubled or tripled. And I listened to someone, I called someone I know in the industry, and he said, you know, SP, the, the dollar rate is, is, is just way out there. And when your vice chairman was uh, talking, he said, everything in the aircraft is dollarized. <laughs> so there's a problem here, that you have to buy everything from outside. And because the dollar rate is changing, and especially going up, maybe you incur additional expenditures. And that is where government should come in, because we shouldn't allow the burden of this exchange rate to kill our people, as well as our businesses. On one hand, I believe that they're going Flying is not luxury. Some people will fly because it is a must, they have to fly. Some will go on business and they say they fly to create wealth, to create, to create employment opportunities. So I think we will have to strike a balance. If you are supposed to be off this part, then we should look for where to get something to block this. But I believe that the aviation industry in Nigeria needs some support. I, I listened to the chairman, Senate Committee on Aviation recently, uh, when I think uh, he said 4 billion naira was not good enough or something. How I wish we could afford more. Because actually the aviation industry around the world is facing serious, serious uh, financial challenges because people are not flying anymore like they do before. And if you allow the businesses, the industry to just go solo without government uh, support through policies, the chances are most of them will sink. And that will throw people into crisis. Some will lose their jobs. Recently, somebody I think one of the airlines, which one lost uh, about 1,000 people? Uh, Arik. Arik. They laid off about 1,000 of their employees. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. 1,000 families. 1, families. That is even worse. Yeah. So we, we, we actually have to protect uh, the industry even for the sake of the people who will lose, because essentially policies are meant to support uh, the people to have a decent life and be protected. So we'll do that. Uh, I want to assure you, uh, Honorable Minister, even though you are not part of uh, this delegation, only uh, intervened in here, but I want to assure the uh, Airline Association of Nigeria that will look into this request of ensuring that you are also uh, taken out of this bad thing uh, when our committee on joint committee on finance national planning and public procurement will present this report to us i want to also advise that your complaint on insurance law you can bring an amendment request, you can do that through your chairman, the Senate uh, Chairman Committee on Aviation, so that we look into it. And on the whole, we are here for everyone. We are here for the big, we are here for the small, we are here for the mighty, as well as the lowly. But mostly, we are here for the masses. We are here for the most vulnerable. No. That is an impersonation. <coughs> Sorry, Chairman. Maybe we should move you to that side. <laughs> so I, I, I believe that we need to act fast. If you have 
an amendment already suggested you can give it to a chairman so that we, we expedite action on it. But as for the finance bill, this is something that we are taking on Tuesday. Are the grace of God. Tuesday? Or Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, no, it's okay. I think we are taking we are taking this thing on Tuesday. Okay, we are taking the finance bill Tuesday next week by the grace of God, and uh, we'll look into that. So thank you most sincerely for coming, and uh, please continue to uh, bear with us. This administration means so well. Otherwise, we wouldn't have uh, we wouldn't have the president granting you waivers all the time because he wants the industry to prosper, to flourish. That's why all the uh, concessions are given. I will support Mr. President to achieve that target. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. I wait for it to set up. Set up. Yes. Yes, sir. Summary. And as it is very necessary, uh, we are appointed as ministers and agent of government to help support businesses for them to continue to prosper and add value and employ people and provide the needed service. So an extension of that responsibility based upon us had made it that I must, I must lead the industry in such a way that there is harmony, there is prosperity, and there's also uh, service delivery that is of high quality. So arising from that, I am aware of the difficulties that airlines are facing in other aviation businesses. And compounded by COVID-19, which has devastated the sector. And this industry of ours is dollarized. And the exchange rate has been on the increase. And foreign exchange accessibility is becoming more difficult so therefore the sector was heading for a crash and if it does if it does not less than 240,000 people will be directly and indirectly affected within the industry and no government will fold their arms and just be looking so I ask them to please continue to endure pump in more money for this business so that we don't collectively lose while I do the running around around government to see how they can be helped and how they can be bailed out. Okay. And that was why, they, based on that, they agree, they trusted me, and they didn't down tools. Because no businessman will be borrowing to put in a sector that he's not reaping from. At some point, they will refuse to give him the loan, and at some point, he cannot pay back the loan, and at some point, his business will collapse. So it's better he, lo he cut the losses and stop now before he puts himself in danger. But our intervention as government, which we were supposed to do, had yielded the result. They've agreed that they will continue uh, to fly. And meanwhile, they have certain demands. If met, the industry can continue to grow. One of Some of which they have just reeled now when I accompany them to see the Senate President. And he has advised that uh, some of their requests uh, should be put forward to National Assembly if it is a legislation. And if it is uh, another legislation like the finance bill, they can go downstairs now at the public hearing uh, to press for their demand and he promised justice will be done. And this government, led by President Muhammad Buhari, is a social democratic government in place. So it is for the welfare of the people and then it is there for the people. Anything that will save jobs and create prosperity is the focus of this government. Thank you, sir. Your Your sir, sir. sir the high Nagama. cost of fares at the moment uh, it's a big worry for Nigeria. Just like you said, the industry... Should be respite. Everything that is supposed to be done, government is taking steps to do it, to cushion the effect, to cushion of the effect of the foreign exchange, of the COVID, uh, and of the difficulty in um, accessing foreign exchange, in the um, VAT, VAT, which is uh, removed for shared transportation, except for aviation, and so on and so forth. All of these, if they are put together, some respite will come to airlines, and airlines will be able to uh, prosper and at least marginally do business to continue to support the economy. Don't, don't underscore the importance of civil aviation. In Nigeria, we have shown that in 2018, aviation becomes the second fastest growing sector. And in 2019, 
aviation became the fastest growing sector in the Nigerian economy. But however, due to COVID uh, and due to this difficulty in accessing the foreign exchange and the high cost of dollar, and meanwhile the business is dollarized, is uh, putting pressure and then is, is, is making the industry to take a backstage. But if these are solved, we take the front stage that we deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Hi.